That was me hollering to the wait call stop you. It's my fault. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, we're glad to see everybody tonight. Uh, we're we're continuing on uh, the subject of faith, and uh, those of you who brought me have gotten me um, your totals from the year. I'll have that taken care of this week. Those that didn't have to, I'll take care of that this week. Um, you know. Busy week. Anyway, praise God. We, we started out last week with the ABCs of Faith Part 1, talking about the uh, who say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shine not doubt in the heart, but shall believe the things he saith come to pass. He'll have whatsoever he saith. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so we covered, and we were doing a little Greek exegesis on that last week. And uh, so we, we'll do that off and on in certain places here but maybe not as extensive as last week because we wanted to show to you that Mark eleven twenty two does say from the Greek, have the faith of God or the God kind of faith. Amen. Hallelujah. And so uh, let's move on. Now, we are told, according to last week, remember that we talked about last week, so 
you know, last week was our main text, Mark 11, 22 to really 26. You know, you really kind of need to uh, kind of add 25 points in there about forgiving, walking in love. Kind of messes with your faith when you don't. Hallelujah. And uh, but in there, we're told, you remember we talked about how that, um, that when it says have, that the, uh, the um, way that the word, Greek word in the, in the Greek with the word have uh, meant that the person being addressed was to actively possess something. Okay? That, that's the, the way the, uh, the Greek uh, second person plural present tense active voice means. Okay? And they're to actively possess it. And then we talked about how that, you know, the word uh, faith was um, a confident assurance and fully persuaded. But and then how we talked about the word theo, God, me is, is uh, the, uh, in the genitive case. And uh, it meant, um, expresses the possession of, the possession of that which preceded, the possession of faith, okay? Faith was a possession of God. So we're told to actively possess the God faith, the faith of God, okay, or the God kind of faith, okay? And so uh, we cover that. We go but since we're told to have it, amen, if we're told to have it, it'd be nice to know how to get it. Wouldn't that be nice to know? Okay. Uh, now, we do know that the Bible tells us that, you know, that, that um, God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. All right? Um, we're told to have this faith. Its characteristics are defined for us, and the way it is applied is explained on how to get it. Oftentimes, it's not. Um, actually, actually, Mark eleven twenty two. he tells us, have it, and here's what you do with it. He didn't tell us how to get it you know, or to build it or to strengthen it, and grow it, okay? Um, but we get to Romans chapter 10, verse 17, where Paul writes and says, So then, faith cometh, okay? By hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes, accompanies actually. Okay, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, the word hearing here is a, a chaos uh, in the Greek. Uh, a K O E S. Okay, and this is the Greek. Now, understand when I write these with the Arabic Arabic uh, alphabet, the, our alphabet, that is a, what they would uh, refer to as a transliteration. We take the equivalent of the Greek lettering and give our equivalent of that letter. We haven't change the word or interpret the word we just we did a letter for letter transliteration so we can read it okay all right and it is a noun and it means that which is heard okay so that this is you know so hearing is that which is heard now let me say this it passed by your eardrums is not hearing Okay, Jesus said, he that has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says. And um, obviously, he's not talking about the, you know, cartilage and skin hanging on the side of your head. All right, unless there's something wrong, everybody has those. So it would be silly to say he that has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says, if he's referring to the natural ear. He's making a reference to those who have spiritual ears. It's, it's, it's allegorical. He's, he's saying, he that has ears, if you if, listen with your heart, listen with your spirit to the, what the Spirit of God's saying. Well, what is the Spirit of God saying? It's the message heard. Faith comes by the message heard, okay, and the hearing by the Word of God. Now, the wor you know, word in the Greek is Ramatos, which is a variant of Rama. And, um, and it means, what? A thing spoken. When we say, you know, we, we, a lot of times with Rama and, and so forth, we, we refer to it as the spoken word. Okay? Um, so here we have, Faith comes, but how does it come? It comes by that which is heard. And what is heard? The word. 
And that is the thing that is spoken. Okay? What was spoken? Remember Jesus said that the Spirit of God would bring to remembrance all what sort of things he had said unto them. Okay? Okay? Look at Hebrews chapter 11. I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners, I remember when I first read the word dive or divers in the Bible, and I was at, I was at work, the place I was working, and um, I didn't know what, a, what divers was. So I went and asked, you know, one of the people there, well, uh, I don't know, you know, a dive is a bar. <laughs> and I sat there with that, and went, you know, God spoke in bars. And he does and he will, but that's not what it meant. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I was so... I was so ignorant, I just, you know, of, of things. I just didn't have any idea what he meant by divers. Different. <laughs> Varying, okay? Um, God who at sundry times and in divers manner, so in, in different times or, or uh, unusual, uh, different seasons and in various manners, hallelujah, spake in time past by the, unto the fathers by the prophets. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son whom he appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. He is the absolute reflection of the Father. Jesus told Philip, he said, have, not, have you been with me so long? Have you not known? He that has seen me has seen the Father. He's the express image of his person. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And upholding all things by the word of his power. And hath by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being so much better than the angels. And we can go on and read, but here we go. God has spoken unto this in his last days, Hebrews. Okay. 9, 11, 1, 1 through 04. Okay. How? Spoke to us. Spoke by the Son. Okay, well, look back over in John, you know, chapter 1, the Gospel of John. Okay, in the beginning was the word. Now, this word here in John 1, okay, the word, word here is logos. In the Greek. Now, if you go, if you go look this up in classical, secular Greek, you're not going to get the same definition, okay? Because, because there it just means an understanding, you know, or something. In the Greek New Testament, in according to the Greek New Testament, logos carries on a deeper meaning, okay? It is, it is an embodiment of, of, a, dissert, of, of a dissertation. It's the, the fullness, um, the, the, the full counsel of something, Okay? carries on a deeper religious meaning in the Greek New Testament than just secular Greek, all right? Um, they, you know, a lot of times they'll use it to the study of, Logos and Greek meant the study of. And, and that just doesn't convey its meaning in the Greek New Testament. It is, um, in, in according to the Word of God, Logos, it becomes the, the full discourse, the full description, the full embodiment of, okay? So in the beginning was the Logos, Jesus, and the Logos was with God, and the Logos was God. So Jesus is the Word. He is the Logos. He's the express image of the Father. Amen. He is you know, the full counsel of the Father. He is the uh, full embodiment. His, he, Jesus is. So in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Okay? And then we move on down. We get to the, down to verse uh, 14, and, um, you know, so like 1 through 3 and then 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory as the only begotten of the Father. And so uh, this Word became by this, this complete discourse, this complete uh, description of God took on flesh. Okay? And we've said this before, and the Word uh, and dwelt among us, uh, in the Greek, that word means literally, literally means tented or tabernacled. He, he came and came in flesh and tented 
are tabernacled among the people. All right? So, now we have, now, so we're, now we've got two different words here to talk about. We've got Romans 10, 17, that faith comes by the ramatos, the thing spoken. Yet, John says that Jesus is the Logos, the entire council. So, how do we begin to reconcile this? Well, do we understand that when we receive the things spoken, when we preach the word, when we teach about Jesus, when we teach what the word of God says about God, that we're, we're pulling aspects of the, full, of the full embodiment and revelation takes place. That thing spoken is taking this logos and a revelation of, aspe- of a part of that logos takes place. That's why you can continue to grow in understanding the revelation of God. Because we're, we're, we're getting rhemas or a, thing, a part of the thing spoken by hearing it. And the revelation of that, he, the ears to hear that what the Spirit says, is taking place. Which is why you could have faith to be saved and not, have, and not exercise faith to be healed. Although the, in, in, the embodiment of the Logos shares all of that. If you haven't heard, people, people have heard Jesus says, but haven't heard Jesus heals, and they're not getting healed. That Jesus delivers. And Jesus says, but they haven't heard that Jesus delivers. It's in the Logos. But they haven't heard the Ramatos. The Rhema. I mean, you know, this is just a variant of Rhema, okay? You know, all the little things that make it change, okay? And so um, that thing spoken when, the word, when, we, when we share by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and, and reveal uh, aspects of Scripture, the Logos, okay, we're taking a part of that. And then the Spirit of God is highlighting it in, in your spirit, okay? It, it produces a thing spoken where, whereby faith comes in reference to that thing spoken. Now, we, we know this, that if you can get places where the gospel hadn't been preached and teaching that Jesus saves, Jesus heals, and Jesus um, uh, raises from the dead, and Jesus you know, is coming back again. Okay, so Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I kind of give the four square thing. You ever, ever, y'all have heard of the four square church. Well, the four squares are Jesus saves, Jesus baptizes with the Holy Spirit, Jesus heals, and Jesus is, soon again, is coming again soon. Those are the four squares of their doctrine. That's where they got the name four square from. Okay, so the four square church. That, so they, they actually have like hats with those, those, those symbols representing each one of those those uh, aspects of their doctrine, which is pretty dadgum sound doctrine as far as I'm concerned. You know, he, 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 he saves, he heals, he baptizes with the Holy Ghost, and he's coming back. Hallelujah. Okay, but if you only, if you only walk it on two legs that Jesus is saved, he's coming back, you can have rhema toast for the rhema toast for those things because you heard the things spoken and not have it for heals and baptizes with the Holy Ghost. Not have a faith for that. Why? Well, you didn't hear it. It wasn't spoken. That aspect of the Logos wasn't spoken. So I didn't preach it. How shall they hear without a preacher? You know? As it is written, how lovely on the mountains are the feet of them who bring glad tidings of good things. Amen? That's it. You know, and of course, that our God reigns. Hallelujah. You know? How lovely. On, I love that old song. You know, Evie did that. Evie, Evie, whatever her name was back in the day. You know? Yeah, you know, how, how lovely on the mountains are the feet of them. Amen? Our God reigns. Hallelujah. So, so here we have Romans saying, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by that which is heard, and that which is heard comes by the ramatos, the thing spoken. That's where faith, that's where we're going to get faith. You're not going to get faith from, I'll tell you what I think. A bunch of you getting together and trying to outdo each other spiritually and just giving you a stinking opinion. Okay, that's not going. That's not going to produce faith. It'll produce confusion. It'll make somebody think they're really slick and, and got it going on. But you won't get faith out of that. Okay, somebody's opinion doesn't produce. Faith. No. See, the ramatos comes out of the logos. You understand? Paul said, "You know that which preached the word of faith, which we preach." Okay, and so. We're, we're, you're going to get rhema, but it's going to come out of the Logos. It's not going to come out of the opinion gossip. Or the I think so gossip. Or the 
It doesn't really matter, I says. No. If you want, you know, well, just believe. How can you just believe? To believe means there has to be a basis upon which you formulate that belief. Amen? So what, you know, um, it's not in my notes. I'm a little... Where is it? Oh, gosh. Remember, Jesus gave us the parable of, of um, the, man, the men who built their houses. He which hear these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto. A man, when he went and dig deep, amen, and built, it, and, and, and built his house on the rock, and the winds blew, and the storm came, and the, and the waves or the, or the stream did beat vehemently upon him. Thank you. Matthew 7, 24. Okay. Therefore, whosoever heareth these things of mine and doeth them, be a doer of the work and not a hearer, only deceiving your own selves, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon the rock. And the rain descended. Now, different verses, you know, it's about he dig deep, okay? Um, Built his house upon a rock, and the rain descended, the floods came, the wind blew, and they beat, they beat upon the house, fell because it was founded upon a rock. Okay? And uh, I wonder if that's over in Luke's that carries it, the deeper, deeper meaning. Anyway, that's, it does. In other, 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 one of the other versions, of, um, Gospels, it says, he dug deep. Okay? And, um, and everyone that heareth these things of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man. Which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, the winds, the floods came, the winds blew and beat the pilot, and, and it fell, and great was the fall of, that, of it. What, what's the difference between sand and rock? Well, we know this. Jesus is what? He's called the rock, he's also the. Chief. That which the builders rejected has become the, the, the chief or head cornerstone. Jesus is the main cornerstone. He's the rock. Well, who's Jesus? He's the Logos. Okay? If you're, what's sand? Anything that's shifting. Anything that sways. Anything that goes this way, that way. Well, what are opinions? Fickle. You can be talking to somebody and have an opinion and change it two seconds later. I'll tell you what I think, and they'll say one thing, and somebody else says something else. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what I think, and they'll go right back to something different. Sand has no basis, okay? It's shifting. Now, you've been down to the beach. How many of you know anything about our Outer Banks? Why is it called the Graveyard of the Atlantic? Does anybody know the reason why the, Atlant the Outer Banks are called the Graveyard of the Atlantic? But why? It, the inlets are mapped on one occasion, and storms come by and completely change the location of the inlet. Okay? So the ships come, would come back over with a map with the inlet and run aground. Because a hurricane has something been by in the two years they hadn't been there and moved it. 300 yards over here. And they, they just kept running the ground because those inlets are constantly changing. They just had an island appear this summer. I mean, you know, they came with names, but the currents in between that and the other mass was terrible. I mean, but they, yeah, all of a sudden they had a new island appear out of nowhere. Okay. See, sand shifts. You can go out there and build a sand castle on the beach, tide come in and come back the next day, and it ain't, it ain't there. Not that it just kind of lost a little bit of its shape. It's, it's gone. Why? Because sand shifts. You can put a rock out there and come back the next day, and it's still there. Okay? Weeds beat all over, and it's still there. Oh, over time, it'll wear away. I get, okay, okay. Okay. 
But sand shifts. Now, thy word, O Lord, is settled in heaven. Jesus said, not one jot nor tittle shall pass away till all this be fulfilled. The word of God endureth or liveth or abideth forever. It doesn't change. Jesus is the rock that struck in the wilderness and gave life-giving water. Amen? Okay? Jesus is the rock. The rock upon which we build is the rock of the word of God. And as we take that word of God, we see, so now we can, we, we're saying this. We have to have a basis of belief. But I'm sorry, but it's, it came undone. I, got, you know, I don't have somebody run up here and do it for me. So the rock, which is the word, is what? Okay, thank you. Yeah, Luke 6.48. Is the other uh, occurrence. Okay, I didn't know. So Luke. Okay. So, the rock is Jesus. He is the Logos. Out of that, so, so our basis of belief is going to be what? The Logos, the Word. Okay? That's where our basis, of so when the thing is spoken by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, He's not going to speak some opinion. He's not going to tell you what Mr. Ph.D. thinks. All right? He's not going to tell you what multi-million dollar bookseller thinks. If the Spirit of God is ministering it to you, it is Word of God. Why? Because the Logos, anointed by the Spirit as a thing spoken, is rhema, is, is revelation, is a thing that you heard that faith comes by. We receive our faith here. And it doesn't shift. Okay? And listen, I, I know, and, 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 I, and I, I'll be honest with you. We have to be really honest. I mean, as charismatic word of faith people, particular word of faith, um, we can flaky. Because if something comes along that tickles our ears a little bit, something comes along that's a little more exciting, We'll move on. It's just it's kind of a pattern of the immaturity in, in, in the circles. Okay? And we don't, by and far, have a lot of a lot of times we're not we don't do what the Bible says, um, study to show thyself approved. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. We get so caught up with the glitz and the glamour and the excitement of something that stirs people up. We forget the importance, not only the importance and not only the value, but the necessity of being solid with it, of having accuracy and not just saying things or repeating things because it gets big crowds and everybody's going through an offerings at this message. We don't, a lot of times we don't want to study because it's not exciting. A Greek word study is not nearly as exciting as, you know, you can have what you say. Amen? Or new level, new devil. I don't, I don't, I don't find that one exciting anyway. You know. I mean, why am I going around and go, new level, new devil? Now, see, everybody catches it. Or, or, or fake it till you make it. Well, I don't believe in faking it. When, listen, I am not going to fake it till I make it. I'm not going to pretend like I've got victory if I don't have victory in my heart. If I don't have it in my heart, then I'm going to do something about it, and that's not faking it. It's going here to the Logos to let the Spirit of God through ministry, through, the, through His own voice, through ministers ministering to us that logos and having things spoken that ramatos come to us for revelation to produce faith in my heart so that i do get because this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith not faking it you got people running around going 
I got it, I got it, I got it. And they don't got it. Because they don't want to make a negative confession. Confession don't mean doodly squat if you don't believe in your heart. So let's stop tricking people into looking like they've got something. It's like during the day back when we had the big old satellite seminars and everybody had the big satellite dish out and the place out of, uh, out of Texas was showing these, uh, all the main speakers. And it was great. I mean, it was great to get, be able to have all those guys coming to your local church live once a month on a four-day seminar. But the thing was, people started getting caught up. They started getting caught up with the power tie of the host church. If that guy had a, you know, a Versace red tie with diamonds on it, all, all the pastors and everything were going out and get because that was the power. He had to look the part. We pulled Amway on the church. We became multi-level marketers. Hello? We're going to drive the fancy car. And we're going to have this and look prosperity because that's how I get it. No, you don't. You're not going to get prosperous. As a matter of fact, you might get broke. If you've gone out and got you a $500 car payment so you can drive a BMW uh, 735i around with sunroof and leather and all that kind of stuff, and you can afford your house payment. Or you're eating ramen noodles because you don't have enough money for anything else. Hello? But you look in the part. I, this is my faith in action. Baby, I'm going to be honest with you. I'd rather my faith be in action eating a T-bone driving a jalopy while I'm on my way. Are you here? But this, we, we, we began to present and try to have an image and thought it was faith. So we began to put more confidence in what we were doing outwardly that appeared to be faith than doing what was necessary inwardly to get faith. And we left a lot of people in the dust. A lot of people became frustrated. A lot of people became dis disillusioned with the message of faith. When it wasn't the message of faith, it was the way some people were preaching it or interpreting it. And they were missing the mark that Jesus walk. Jesus is, God spoke to us by the Son. The Son is the Logos. That becomes our basis of belief and that the Spirit of God takes aspects and builds. He's always built. There's, there's such much here that we can keep getting faith about. All right? He keeps building in us as we listen to the Logos, inspired Spirit, and making it ramatos of a thing spoken and becomes a message which we've heard that brings faith. And so we're not putting our confidence in what kind of car we drive, if we're wearing the right designer suits, so we can look the part, so we can feel the part. We mixed in power of positive thinking over the power of getting revelation. And I'll, I'll, I have to be honest with you, looking back at my own life and early ministry, I did the same things. I was immature. I thought I, thought I had it. I was sincere, but I was sincerely off target. Okay? It's not that I don't believe in faith. I'm just saying we were going the right way to have it produced in our life. And that's why we weren't getting the results we thought we should have been getting. Because we weren't going the right path and how it comes. People going out buying, you know, getting only hand-tailored suits because they had to look like a prosperity person. I ask them, did you go back and listen to Dad's old tapes? Hello? Did you ever listen to his old stuff? When he's driving the car, when only driving at night? Because they didn't have steel belted radios back then. They didn't have glass belted radios. They had... One ply, two ply, three ply, four ply, eight ply tires. Just layers of rubber. And he wore the, drove it till the tires were so bald, he could only drive it at night or the heat would cause them to blow up. He said he'd be driving down the road at night and, uh, you know, not have enough money and the windows down because it was, you know, still muggy at night out in Texas and, 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 and the tires start singing to him. What you going to do now? What you're going to do now? What you're going to do now? 
car got so bad, he had to sell it for junk. But he kept preaching faith. He wasn't depending on the external things to demonstrate he had faith. He was building out of the Logos and the revelation by the word of Spirit of God, moving on that Logos and revealing it to him a basis of faith that grew. And even when it looked like he was losing and everybody looking, wore three pairs of shoes out having to walk. Had to start taking buses to get to his next meeting because he didn't have a car. And working the word of God. Hello. And he didn't go out and buy a car that he couldn't afford. So everybody, when he preached on prosperity, everybody would believe he was really prosperous because he had a fancy car. Hello. And we started preaching that, you know. I remember, you know, 20 years ago, every preacher had to have a Rolex. And if they didn't have one, and a preacher who had one who would give it to him as seed. And they go tell everybody they gave their seed Rolex over here because they want a presidential, the $25,000 one. And somebody give it to them. So much of that was manipulation that what faith. We manipulated people. It is. Telling them, I'm believing God. You know, I gave away my watch this week and I'm believing God's Rolex in its place. And somebody woke up out. The Lord told me to give you a Rolex. You know? And some guy come in and give the pastor a watch and say, and it was one of the five thousand dollar ones. And it's seed faith for their twenty five thousand dollar presidential. They call me crazy. They call me poverty minded. I'm not sure if I want twenty five thousand dollars hanging on my arm. Hello? Old bull in the china shop, I bang crystals against the door jams, all kinds of stuff. You know? I went, how much does the face that thing cost? Twelve? To put replace the glass? I don't know. But you know, and we all were excited. Oh, we thought, oh, this is faith. Look at faith at work. You know, they're giving their watch and getting a better one next week. You know, I gave away my this and, and I got a $25,000 in place last week. And then everybody gets caught up in these actions that we think are demonstrations of faith. When we're not getting here. We're copying the action. And we're not going to the place that it actually produces it. The action won't produce faith. Faith doesn't come by hearing by and, and, and faith doesn't come by buying and buying a new car. That doesn't produce faith. Faith doesn't come by wearing and wearing a Rolex. That doesn't produce prosperity. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, the word of God does tell us to do certain things. In the case of money, it tells us to give and give to God. I do believe that you shouldn't muzzle out the oxen that trap out the corn. The laborers is worthy of his hire. That's biblical. But when we begin to use that as a manipulative tool to make preachers rich with the promise of phenomenal prosperity because you did, now they're going to put their faith in, make sure they got it to the preacher. No. Biblical prosperity is you follow all the word of God. You tithe, you give. You sow. You take care of the kingdom of God. You give to the poor. Amen? And you don't muzzle the oxen that trap out the corn. It did not say you move them into the French Riviera. You don't muzzle. Okay? I know churches that give their pastors $40,000 automobiles for Pastor Appreciation Day. But it's demanded. You're going to be blessed. You're going to take care of the man of God. The man of, the man of God is a vessel of God. Sent to be your minister. And you should not muzzle the ox. And you should take care of them. But it does not come uh, in, under the guise that if you give this particular offering to the pastor, you're not going to have a house payment ever again. And you're going to get the car of your dreams. If you make sure the pastor's got a good car. Okay? No. Getting off of that, 
taking care of God's servant so he is he's able to take care of the sheep is biblical and should be a heart thing, not a I'm going to get rich doing this thing. How are you going to get prosperous? That's going to tell you how as the spirit of God anoints it and as he leads and guides you. He may tell you to go give the pastor some money. I get Pentecostal handshakes. We call them, we ask, old Pentecost, we call them Pentecostal handshakes. Somebody come through the door, on the back church, shake your hand, and when they left, there was money in your hand. No big deal, no big whatever. They just, they had on their heart to bless the pastor. Okay. All right? But you're not going to get the promise that tomorrow you're not going to have another house payment because you did that. Prosperity doesn't work quite like that. There are laws of prosperity and there are things that govern the word of God concerning prosperity that the Logos will teach us and the Holy Spirit will reveal to us so that faith comes. You shouldn't ever give unless you're giving in faith. You never give because you've been constrained or manipulated. And we told the church, we stopped, we asked that they stop uh, uh, doing Pastor Appreciation Day for us. We just said stop. Because we got people in the church who got mad and left the church. Because they felt like they were being pressured and constrained to do something for us. I don't need anything that they gave me. Do you understand what I'm saying? I can live without it. I don't want their lives shipwrecked and their faith messed up because they felt like they, were, they weren't given because they loved us. They were given because they were pressured. And felt like they had to. And that's not a labor of love. And I always tell people, if you give because you feel like you're being pressured to give, your reward is you get rid of the pressure. That's your harvest. No pressure. There's no reward for it because you want faith about it. I don't want people to give to me if it's going to be because they feel constrained or they have to. If they're obeying God and God told them and, they, and they're obedient to the Lord and they're following the heart, then we will receive. And sure, who doesn't like to get blessed? But I have to be careful in my position not to manipulate you into blessing me under the guise that if you give up to the higher anointing, you're not going to have any problems financially. I'm not the higher anointing. Jesus is the higher anointing. No minister is the higher anointing. His anointing is for his place. Just like your anointing is for your place. The anointing of the pastor is no more special or whatever in relationship to the anointing of you as a church laborer. It's from God. It is equipped to do a purpose. And the higher anointing is Jesus. So if you're going to give up to the higher anointing, give to Jesus. And give where he says give. And how he says give. And when he says give. And not because somebody got up and said, I'm the man of God and blessed be God forever. If you'll give to me, you will have supernatural debt cancellation. And you're running around with millions of dollars because you've got all, you're going all over the country preaching the stuff that you people, and they're just, they're falling for it. Amen. We have to answer minutes. I'm talking about we being ministers. We'll have to answer to God for when we misused our position and raped the people of God and did not provide for them. What did Jesus tell Peter to do? He said, if you love me, you'll feed my sheep. You won't steal the food off their plate. You'll feed them. Hello. I said, you won't steal the food off their plate. You'll feed them. Amen. So then what do we do? What do we feed them? We give them the Logos so that the spirit can bring toss out of it. So that the message heard produces faith in them. Amen. This is so important. 
And we need to get, we can have faith giants if we ministers would stop being self-serving and egocentric and even in some cases narcissistic and do our job and feed the sheep of God so that faith can come in their heart. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And I'm El Dundo. All right. Praise the Lord. Hope you got something out of that. Those watching tonight on Facebook, we're glad you joined us. Hope you got blessed. Um, I don't know why these things have something, you know. It's like, Lord, why can't I just preach the, you can have what you say. And <clears throat> now, look, I know that's one of Brother Hagin's sermons, and I'm not, I'm not knocking his sermon. Um, a lot of people get caught up with the title and don't read the book. You know? The title's catchy, but you've got to read the book. The book doesn't just say, it talks about having faith and believing and speaking and doing what the Word of God says and, and getting your faith out of the Word of God. Brother Hagin said this, says this also. You know, so I'm not mocking Brother Hagin's title, okay? But if all you do is go around and start saying the title, what's your basis for faith? You can have what you say. Well, why can I have what I say? Because Jesus said, if I say it and believe in my heart and don't doubt it, I'll have it. So what's the basis of my belief if I'm going to have what I say? Because you just can't run around and say anything you want to say and get it. Like, number one, you can't have my wife. And I don't care what the Lord has about it. I got something to say about it. And I will go to the Lord and say, vengeance is yours, but I'll take care of it for you. Or I'm your vessel tonight. Me and crowbar. Okay. Now, you understand, when I say I don't care what the Lord says, I, you know what I'm saying, you know. You know I know the Bible says, vengeance is mine, say, Lord, I will repay. And uh, I'm thinking, you know, you know, go take care of Copeland tonight. You don't have to bother with it. I got it. All right? Praise. Let's receive our offering. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for the time and the offering. Thank you that people are blessed. Thank you that heaven's windows are open. And you empty out of them blessings. They don't have room enough to receive. That's what your word says. In Jesus' name, A to the men. Amen. We love you. God bless you. Thank you for joining us on Facebook tonight. We sure appreciate you joining in with us. And don't forget, coming up in the next few weeks, we're going to begin a series on the Believer's Authority using uh, Brother Kenneth Hagin's book, The Believer's Authority Legacy Edition, The Believer's Authority Study Guide, The Believer's Authority a CD Series, and Reigning in Life as a King CD Series. And uh, so if you're at home, you can, you can acquire all the things either through rhema.org or through uh, Whitaker House. Uh, uh, or Anchor Distributors, or Anchor Distributors. You can get either one of those. You can, get, I think even Amazon has some of it. You can get that and have it at home. So when we start the series, you can go along with us. But, um, you know, just let it coming up. Um, but until we meet again, remember this. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. We love you. See you next